How's it going guys? So today's video is a bit of a two for one. I'm going to show you how to build a fish tank and then I'm going to show you how to make that fish tank into a sump tank. A sump tank is a tank that goes below your display tank and you use it for filtration. Now the silicone that we're going to be using for this is Dow Corning 781. It's a very strong silicone um, and it's safe for use with drinking water containers. So as far as I'm concerned, if it's safe for use with drinking water, it's safe for use for my fish. Now first of all, what we want to do is we want to run a bead of silicone along the edge of your first piece of glass. So this piece of glass is going to be our back piece. What you want to do is take your piece of glass, put it down on top of your base um, and you want it to sit flush with the edge of the base. So when you look down it, you're just going to just go straight down to the floor. You're not going to see um, the glass base on the outside, but obviously you are going to on the inside. Use your fingers just to level it up. Don't worry if you're smudging the silicone or if silicone's going all over the place because you can just do like what I'm doing now and just take your finger, rub it across the edge and just rub off any excess silicone and then just wipe it on a piece of tissue or something like that. Do this on both the outside and the inside so that you can get a nice smooth finish and it also helps on keeping the tank watertight. Now next, you're going to want to get a glamorous assistant, like I am, and bring my wife in to hold this piece of glass for me, or you're going to have to find a way to support this piece of glass while you go and get the side piece um, and stick that one in. So here, I've got my side piece, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to do another bead of silicone across the bottom of the piece of glass and across the left side of the piece of glass. And then, as you can see, I'm going to put the base down and then I'm going to stick the side piece, uh, the left hand side, to the back piece of glass. Get it all level and smooth out the silicone just like you did on the back piece of glass. You want to get a bit of electrical tape um, and then just use that to support the edges. Um, this will just give you that just that added bit, peace of mind um, when you're you know, working around the tank. Do the same again on the right hand side, add your other side piece. So again, just put a piece of, uh, a bead of silicone across the bottom of the glass and also across the side of the glass. Again, don't worry if it gets everywhere or if it gets all messy because you can clean it all up afterwards. Next up, I'm going to show you a different way. So, like I've shown you before, you can run a bead of silicone across the piece of glass that's going to be fitted or you can run the silicone on the glass that's already there, just like I'm doing here. Now again, like I said, don't worry if you make a mess and don't worry if it's you know just all wiggly and like this is. Um, it'll still stick down just as well. And then again, like I said, afterwards you can just easily clean it off um, once it's dry with a Stanley knife um, or a Stanley blade and it'll just cut away nice and easy. Put a bead of silicone up the side pieces of glass as well and put your front piece of glass in. Make sure it's, um, it sits flush against both side pieces and the base. And then again, take your finger and just smooth out the silicone. Once you've done this and you've put all your masking tape, sorry, your electrical tape to support the edges, get your silicone gun and just do a bead of silicone on the inside of the tank. This is going to give you added um, waterproofing or added support for your edges so that you're not going to get any leaks. Same as before, take your finger, put it on the silicone bead you just put in and then just run your finger up the edge of the tank and you'll get that nice smooth finish.
do this for all four corners and then once you've done it on all four corners you've got it all nice and smooth then you can move on to the next bit. Once you've done it on the four corners, you want to move down to the base. So you want to do the same as what you've done all the way through, right across the bottom of the glass, on the front, on the sides, and on the back. Get it all nice and smooth, and then you're almost done. So there you go guys, that is your fish tank finished. Now if you wanted, you could just go ahead and just use this as a fish tank. Um, but obviously we're gonna be using this as a sump. So next up, we're gonna start putting in the baffles. Now when it comes to adding baffles to the tank, it may be necessary for you to cut your own glass. Now me personally, what I suggest is go to um, the place where you're buying your glass and just get everything pre-cut um, so all you've got to do is fit it that's the best way now if you haven't got that option if you're building the, the tank out of recycled glass for example old tanks that you've broken down then this is what you'd have to do just get yourself a straight edge I'm using um, a clamp and get yourself a glass cutter now a glass cutter is just simply a Basically, it's just like a little stick with a tiny little wheel on the end and you just run it up and down the glass to, to create a sort of like a groove line, a scored line into the glass. And then once you've, uh, once you've done a few passes on the glass and give it a good scored line, you can then um, put it over an edge. Now, as we all know, I'm very limited with my tools and things like that, so I just use what I can. Now, this is two DVD cases, and all I've done for, to get my edge is just place the glass onto them, and then just press down, pop, and the grooved line that you've created creates a stress point, so when you press down, it snaps right across that line. Then, you go over to the tank, and you start adding the baffles in. Now I'm using DVD cases again to get the height of the baffle. Now this baffle that I'm adding, I don't want this one on the base of the tank. I want this raised up a little bit higher because this is gonna be the one that's gonna stop the water going over the top. So to do this, we just put the glass on the DVD cases. So obviously if you want it higher, use another DVD case. And then once you've got it in the position you want it in, just simply hold it and then run some silicone up the side of the glass. Same as what you've done, um, building the tank and just, again, just run it up the front and the back. And then as you did before, once you've done that, take your finger and just run it up the edge of the glass to create a nice smooth edge. And there you go, you've done it. So all that's left to do now is water test it. So I've taken mine out into my backyard and I've started to fill each chamber up at a time. As you can see on the left hand side at the moment, I'm filling up the small chamber. Now this chamber will be housing my pipes. 
Next, as you can see now, the water's flowing over onto a flat piece of glass that's got two holes in it. Now these holes are for filter socks. There we go. What happens is, the water flows into this chamber, rises up, and then it has nowhere else to go other than down the filter socks. That way, um, the water is completely filtered because it has to pass through the filter socks to be able to continue its journey. Once that section is filled and the section next to it is filled, which is for the skimmer, the water will then go over the next baffle and it will flow underneath the middle baffle and then up and over into the big chamber as you can see now. Now this chamber is going to be for my refugium, so this is going to hold macro algaes and possibly even an algae scrubber. Now I may be doing a DIY video on how to build an algae scrubber, so keep an eye on the channel for that one. Once that's filled, it'll flow over to the next baffle, under the middle one, and then finally it'll rest into the return chamber. And there we go. Once you've water tested your sump for a while, for a few days or so outside, you can bring it in and get it running. Now as you can see that first small chamber has got my pipes in. Now these pipes are completely submerged so there's no splashing sound at all so it's really really silent this sump. The second chamber has got the two holes and that's where the filter socks go. So once the water leaves that area it goes over the filter socks and gets filtered by them. It then goes into the next chamber which has my skimmer. As you can see that's, uh, that's starting to work well. It then flows over the baffle, under the baffle and then over into the refugium section which has already got a little bit of Cheeto in there. I'm hoping to completely fill that section with Cheeto. There'll be literally no room for anything else, hopefully. I've also got a bag of carbon in there. Now the reason why I've got this sheet of egg crate in that baffle is to catch any stray Cheeto that may leave that chamber um, and hope and they'll stop it from getting clogged up in my return pump. Once, it, once the water flows from the return chamber, it flows through a UV steriliser and back to the tank. Now I'm using just a standard um, LED floodlight to light the Cheeto. And I'm also using a Fluval FX5 canister filter. Now I'm going to do a reef update soon, so I'll let you know the reason why I'm doing this. So keep an eye on the channel. Now just over here, we've got a wireless router. This wireless router is connected up to my Senai that you can see there. Now these Senais are really good, I like them. They keep an eye on your tank for you and they send you text messages or emails if anything's gone wrong. So guys, I hope this has inspired you to build your own sumps and don't forget to leave your comments in the comment section below. Catch you later.